In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the second reading, St. Peter tells us, In your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. What did Peter mean by this? How can we sanctify Christ when he is already the all-holy God? To understand this, we take the traditional meaning of holy or being holy, which is to separate something or someone for God. What St. Peter meant is for us to set Jesus apart from all other things in our hearts and make him the Lord of our lives. The first reading shows us what happens when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives. Philip the deacon went to Samaria and preached Christ. And the effect is that the demons were driven out, paralyzed, and the lame are cured. These are physical signs of a spiritual reality that evil loses its hold on people and souls that are paralyzed by sin are set free. When we hope, while we hope and pray that those who receive the Holy Spirit will be healed physically, the more important healing is what happens in our souls. Spiritual healing is more important than physical healing. The sad thing is that many seek healing for their souls and their souls are restless because they do not know where to find rest. St. Augustine said, you move us to delight in praising you for you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. If our hearts are restless, it is because we are searching for something or more accurately for someone our hearts will be restless either because of boredom, because of our sins, our guilt, our shame, of our addictions, until we rest in God, until we decide to love Him and allow Him to love us. Since it is Mother's Day, I want to address mothers today. You are a mother if you have born or are bearing a child in your womb. Let's get our terminology correct. If you are pregnant, you are not a mother-to-be. You are already a mother. If you have raised a child or are raising a child, whether it be your own or someone else, you are a mother. And I thank you and commend you for being here today. And if you are here with your little ones, double commendation to you. Thank you. Do not for once feel uneasy when your children are noisy. They are children. Let them be children. Ignore the uncharitable stares of people. What matters is that you are pleasing the Lord when you bring your children to Mass. As a married man, who helped my wife, my wife raise our children. I know that being a mother is not easy. You have your worries, you have your struggles, and if you are a single mom, you have more than that. But always remember, God did not make you a mother only to abandon you. God is always with you. The Holy Spirit lives in you and will help you. While it is your husband's responsibility to pass the faith to your children, you must protect your husband from himself and from forces that want to destroy your husband and therefore your family. And before I continue, I will admit that what I'm going to say next causes me fear and trembling because that it, I know it will dig up some old wounds that people have covered and may not want to bring up. But I believe that this is what the Lord wants me to preach. So I do so in obedience to him, believing that he will do great things for you today. And I speak in love, desiring only your healing and peace. 
I now specifically speak to mothers who have lost their children, whether at childbirth or as they were growing up, or those who have lost their faith. I also speak to those who have lost children in the womb, whether through some accidents of nature or through a violent act of a human being, whether done personally or by others. I can say this confidently that you are not alone in your grief and suffering. No human being can know what you are going through, but God knows what you have been through and what you are going through. And he tells you now at this Mass not to be afraid to approach him. You or people may blame you or condemn you for what happened, but God does not see you as a woman to condemn. He sees you as a daughter who is hurt and broken, who desperately needs healing, peace, and the unconditional love that only he can bring. The Son of God proved this by dying on the cross for you so he can raise you up in glory. When you sanctify Christ in your heart as Lord, he becomes Lord of your suffering, the Lord of your guilt and shame, the Lord of your pain and sin, and he will set you free from the demons that haunt you, from whatever paralyzes you, and from whatever enslaves you. Jesus is our only savior. He is the only one who can set us free. In the gospel today, Jesus said, he will not leave you orphans because he is coming to you so that you can live. And when you allow him to enter your life, you will be united with him just as he is united with his father. He promised that he will love you and reveal himself to you. Your heavenly father calls you today to come home because he wants to do great and awesome things for you. Not because you have bought your way to it, not because you deserve it, but because he is holy and he loves you. He begs you to come and let him love you through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not be afraid because when you sanctify Christ the Lord, you are in Christ and there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Surrender your guilt, your shame, your sin, your past and your future to him. Your past may be dark and sinful, but your future will be glorious when you sanctify Christ Jesus in your heart as Lord. Surrender the child you have lost to the Lord. And if you have lost the child in the womb because of a violent act, give the child a name and ask the child to forgive you and pray for you. And if you want to surrender to Jesus your life, you may repeat this prayer after me. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.